Hi everyone, I just wanted to introduce some more about the ATC or Artist Trading Card um, which is a swap that we've been running for 2022 and we're hoping to run again in 2023. Um, we'd love more people to join in. Um, the only rules are they have to be a set size which is two and a half by three and a half inches. You can buy pre-sized squares like this. Um, online if you can't be bothered to cut yourself or you just use cereal box card um, and the only rules for our particular swap are that they must include fabric and uh, some kind of embroidery or stitching uh, so these are some of the cards that I have done for this year's swap so we've got January almost May a couple of summery ones Sunset Mountains by the uh, by the sea, um, and these I make in the hoop, uh, much like a traditional stitch scape. Uh, I make several at a time, and they're all embroidered, collaged, and embroidered. And then before I cut them out of the hoop, I stitch on my backs uh, and write write the details on them. So the next swap coming up for me is the October swap, which is on the theme of autumn. Uh, autumn blaze, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do, or what I've already done, is I've got a huge hoop. This is quite a big, big one. I think it's 20, must be bigger than that, 30 centimetre hoop, maybe. Uh, and it's a squared off one, so I get more space in the corners. Um, and I've already gone ahead and drawn it around my card template so that I've got an idea of the shape that I'm trying to fill um, and I just thought I'd <clears throat> put my swap cards together just to show you how um, I would put them together. Um, I haven't actually got much of a plan going for this so I've just picked out a few fat quarters from my rather enormous stash which I thought might fit the autumn blaze theme so some of these are facet fabrics which are lovely and um, some of them are batik fabrics some just normal prints and I got some felt um, I was perhaps thinking I could maybe do so we've had a few woodland themed ones so this is a bluebell woods themed one and we've just done a woodland walk one which was quite green but I thought maybe I could do a autumnal version of that so maybe use some felt for some tree trunks um, and I've also got if I can fit them in some fun fancy yarns and silk scraps and bits and bobs in an autumnal colour. So I, there are lots of different ways you can do this. You don't have to be, you don't have to make a particular scene. Um, you can interpret the theme anyway. And what's been really nice this swap is people's interpretations of themes and the themes that I came up with, but. Um, they can be interpreted in so many different ways. Um, you can be abstract or quite literal, a bit whimsical um, or quite realistic. It really doesn't matter. Um, the fun is that everybody makes something unique um, and then for the swap, everyone sends all their cards in to me because I'm the host and then I will swap them out and I will swap them out and send them back up to everyone so everyone's cards get sent in with a self-addressed envelope so you have to pay your own postage um, and size wise you probably need a large letter envelope to send out and at least uh, a and a normal letter to send to send your cards back in um, I don't know I'm just try I'm trying to talk and concentrate at the same time. It's proving very tricky. And I'm doing this whilst the baby's asleep. I think that's perhaps a little too dark. What do you think? There's yellow here, matches the yellow there. Reds could go with that red. With these little tiny cards, because they are so little, you don't really want to overload them. I'm not really sure what my scene is going to be. B. I think that's got too much pink in. 
can I perhaps sneak in a little tiny? This is really nice fabric. It's got actually leaves in it, which is quite nice. Um, the themes for the 2023 swap are up on my website if you'd like to have a go. You don't have to be an experienced embroiderer, a fantastic stitcher. You might be more of a machine stitcher or a quilter. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Just anyone can have a go. See, I think that could work, those three. So then how would I turn that into more of a scene? Um, I approach it from a kind of my normal stitchscape brain. So I like to make them into scenes, as you'll see from my previous cards. They are all, apart from that one maybe, they are all sort of more landscape scenes. Um, but I could just quickly show you, these are some of the cards that I've received back. So just to show you the variety, uh, this lovely card from Sandra, she has painted a card background. Just checking you can see. She's painted her gorgeous background in card. Uh, and then this is quite a quick one for her. So this is a lovely kind of velvety felt. I think it might be felt. Um, and then she's used a metallic thread to couch on a slightly metallic fancy yarn along the edge to kind of really emphasise and make that edge really glittery. And then just used her metallic thread to come down and into the uh, fabric just to enhance that and glued that on. So it doesn't have to be full stitching. So that's a really lovely example. We've got this one from Linda. Really nice fabric layering, some fun with different stitches, um, lots of different stitch. This is actually quite chunky, where she's put so many sort of fat stitches on, used lots of um, strands at once. There's kind of rough edges, nicely folded edges, so the contrast in here are really lovely. Um, this one from da uh, from Jackie, um, it's got this beautiful kind of papery with angel hair texture, I'm not really sure what the background is. And then she's used papers and machine stitched those on her tree trunks and just added some little stitches um, around. She's got some sort of fibres stitched in as well for, for leaves. This one's from Tracy. She's got some real shells on here. Now this one, um, uh, I, I kept, because I couldn't send it out it's, um, because they're too thick to go in a normal, um, letter stamp for the UK so I have forced myself to keep this beautiful card uh, which was great hardship I assure you um, and it's got sequins on it it's got some beading beautiful shells this lovely play with um, feather stitch and chain stitches you've got bubbles with French knots and gorgeous fish and uh, there's lots of texture some scrim at the bottom so lots of different things going on in there this one I think was from Lon yes Lon for daffodils um, and again a lovely scene beautiful French knots kind of really building up very simple um, and then this one from Diane has got this lovely glittery felt she's used pre-printed fabrics had some real fun with some hessian um, fabric there making it into a fence and just a few stitches so it doesn't have to be at all complicated everyone has their own take on things and what's been really nice during this swap is how different everybody has been but also how they've kind of grown which sort of sounds like a daft thing but um it kind of feels that everyone's got more confident as they start to receive cards back again it sparks off new ideas I'll just check sparks off new ideas um, and you can share those ideas as a Facebook page you can join and it's it's just been really good fun it's just kind of really kept me kept me going I suppose see I could have some fun trees maybe Move that. perhaps I could have different colours 
Ooh, that'll be a bit tight. Let's go that way. Yeah, I'm not entirely 100% about these trees. It just feels like I might need some tree in my autumn blaze. And I'm just randomly cutting. I haven't pre-thought this at all. We'll just see how it see how it pans out. So I could have something like that per card, maybe off to the side is a bit nicer. Or I could even have two trees. You can't make it too thick, that's the that's the only thing. Once you start adding layers of felt on top of everything else can become a bit chunky for the postman well let's pop that aside let's start cutting these because I think that's how I'm gonna go this is a K facet fabric which is really lovely because it turns everything so so different um, I've used him recently in my sunset mountains um, and what have I done with these? this is my folder that I'm keeping them in I've pulled some of these out but where I've used him, his fabrics before, on this layer here, each card has been completely different. So I make mul more multiples than are required. Um, if you join in the swap, you only need to make two cards per theme. Uh, one for you to keep, so you would get away with not even doing that one if you wanted. Um, but one for you to keep so that it reminds you of everything that you have done, which I thought was quite a nice thing to do. Um, and one for you to send in to be swapped out for somebody else's piece of work. So let's go and get some green in that one. And I just tend to, for these backgrounds, cut off a strip, try not to cut it straight completely straight so I've sort of got a straight line but it's not actually a straight line if you see what I mean and then let's just see how many so I'm going to do four I tend to do more cards than is required just in case somebody joins the swap late or something gets lost in the post and then even if I receive someone else's at a later date or they missed one and want to go back um, I can still swap with them. It doesn't doesn't matter. Oh, see, that's got more than I need. There we go. That's a bit wasteful. That's a shame. So four there, and you can always cut these cut these down, trim them further. Um, but I first started making ATCs donkeys years ago. It used to be a huge thing, um, although I think traditionally, or mostly, it was a paper, paper-based, um, and a lot of, you used to come and get a lot of kind of steampunk things, um, paintings, uh, but I managed to find, I joined up with a mixed media group, which kind of waned a little bit toward the end which is why it glows but also people were then complaining that they didn't like getting the textile ones they wanted paper craft ones which um had a few bits of extra things on but you could do anything i used i even made one that had like rusted beer bottle tops on it or the rust theme just went looking for them in the on the pavement um, but it was brilliant uh, and it ended up being the same few swapping so we stopped swapping in the end but we used to also make it wasn't just ATCs which are obviously the set size you could also make um, things called inches which are as the name suggests small squares which are just an inch and you'd make 12 of them and swap those and they were really fun to make because they were such a challenge. You'd get this theme and you have to fit the whole theme in just an inch square. It was ridiculous. Um, we also used to do postcards. We'd have 
themed Christmas swaps uh, where you, you make, I think one we did was the 12 days of Christmas. So you had to make um, square shapes or each shape was a slightly different shape, but they were all eventually designed to go together. So you'd have a panel by the end of it of all these Christmas themed pieces made by somebody else that you could hang up. That was really lovely. Or books we could, we could make, get a certain size. I think we did a colour book. So everyone had to make a square on a different colour theme. And then at the end of it, you'd stitch everybody's squares together and make a, a rainbow colour book. You used to do loads of stuff. It was really lovely. And I missed making the ATCs. I put quite a lot on mine because I get carried away, which I do anyway. Uh, just because I really love making all these things. And at the moment, the way I've got my new little boy, it's really nice to have a tiny project to be working on because it doesn't take long to stitch one layer. And I don't get very much time to sew now at all. It's usually when he's in bed. So I get an hour, hour and a half. Or I try to tell myself I'm not allowed to do any housework during that hour, hour and a half. I have to sit and sew or I'll probably go mad. If I haven't gone mad already. So this is going to be quite colourful. You could even put, I could even put some sequins on this and make it really kind of glittery. I don't know how much glitter I've got hanging around really. This kind of, I thought, would go nicely with that yellow, but also I associate kind of autumn with really lovely sunsets and sun coming through the trees because you'll be able to see it a bit more as the <clears throat> leaves start to turn colour. And they also glow, don't they, in the, in the autumn when the leaves really start to yellow. And get a bit crispy that creates gaps in the canopy that you wouldn't normally get and they just glow the sun just picks up on those colors um as usual i don't iron anything which is probably sacrilegious to some and i probably won't stitch this yellow layer at all it will just be the color at the top of the card because it would be so tiny there's absolutely no point in stitching it unless you want to create a texture I suppose <clears throat> okay so I'm just going to mark out on one of these I, I'm not going to stitch the fabric on this side they'll be stitched down on the other side and I'll show you how I do that I just want to use this square temporarily to mark out right I think it was that one then that one then I had a little bit of that one, followed by my yellow, followed by this snazzy confetti one. So that's quite fun. So if I were then to add on my little snazzy tree, that could look quite fun. And I've got this embellishment pack which I picked up years and years ago at a trade fair which is from 21stcenturyyarns.com I don't know if they're still going are these two yellow two orange they're quite garish aren't they they might be a bit too vibrant I mean that's lovely though that's really nice so maybe I could do some circles and just stitch those on because that's not going to fray do some circles for tiny little leaves or just cut leaf shapes out and put those down. Let's leave that out, put the rest away. What else have we got in this little... Oh look, I have already previously done that with something. Mm, maybe. I'll think about that. Oh, we've got... Oh, we've got this fun fringing yarn. is 
fun. Okay, that going behind. We could zigzag that. How could you zigzag that? We could have that as reeds or rushes in the bottom. So I could zigzag. Create some texture down here. That could be quite fun. We've got this one, which is perhaps more my colour palette, and I've no idea how on earth I'm going to find the end of that. Where would you even start to find the end of that? Ah, look at that. Miracle. So this has got some kind of papery thing and then a yarny thing, in all technical terms. So I could scrunch that as well and have that as a little bit of texture. Or this one, perhaps. We could go just under and edge something. I think if I twisted it, as it's wanting to twist itself. Twist that there. Well, you could even turn them into trees. If you had like a felt tree, there's nothing stopping you creating hints of trees behind with those. We've got just a normal yarn, brown yarn, from somewhere. I think I'm sure things just appear in my house. I can't possibly have collected all of this. It's just endless. Endless amount of stuff if I twisted a couple. I think these would be better as edgings to build up texture there. And just I might ignore this pattern. Are they all going upwards? No, not really. And just do some rushes. I cut like that. That looks better on that one than that one. I think the greens confusing that a little bit but that's fine so those are things to consider I might also try and get out some steampunk type um, sequins and apologies if you can hear the traffic outside the window we have moved house and now live next to a busy road there's an ambulance or something coming past so not only do I have the baby sleep in the quieter room, I've had to come into the less quiet room. I was going to go outside. We've got a little balcony, but that doesn't work either. So I'm, I've ended up in what will be his nursery. Uh, and I would show you my setup, but it's slightly too embarrassing. So... The way I put these on, and I know people do these differently. I imagine everybody's come up with their own way of doing things. This is just the way that I find works for me. <laughs> Once I've got all my fabrics cut out, there's not any particular layering happening on this one. Obviously on some of them, they're a bit more detailed. So this one here, um, the house, the chimney for the house uh, is all a specific shape so I cut out templates for that first. Templates for the snow which is made out of felt so that I had everything exactly the same. For the flower I had a template for the petals but nothing else was templated it was all just randomly cut. A template for the beach hut and um, everything else is randomly cut. So for this I haven't really got a particular theme. If it's autumn blaze I would say that was quite autumnal. I hope it everyone will agree. I'm so excited to see what everyone else is going to do as well. I've seen a couple, some very organised people in the group um, have already sent in their cards. Um, so I've seen a few and there's been some lovely designs. So you can't see and I would normally hold this much higher up to the light but I'm following the template drawn lines on the back Oh, that's too straight. Let's just wiggle that a little bit more. 
quickly but I have room for wiggle edge put it over there so I can just about see the lines behind here uh, and this is a bit like how I make my pebbles sort of backwards and forwards thing just a tad maybe these are all a bit too straight perhaps I should wiggle them more and I'm wiggling just kind of helps blend the fabrics together and makes them look um, less uniform, less rigid. Um, nature doesn't have straight lines and I don't know, have you ever walked in an autumnal wood and thought, my goodness, there's such a grid-like formation here? So why would you put a grid-like formation in your, in your pieces? So where are we? Is that better? So that would go there. Perhaps I could angle them. I've cut quite big pieces. So this scope to move them around a bit. So I'm just going to flip that round. Check that it covers everything. Yes, it does. So I'm holding that in position. And I think if you were to use the same technique you wouldn't be making quite as many i'm also going to be making the following month the november starry night sky month in here as well before i cut everything out so and i'll be doing four of those as well so it's just very ambitious so i'd suggest you have a much smaller hoop which would make this far easier if you're going to do the same technique uh, and what I'm basically doing is I'm holding my fabric in place on the front and I would also usually use the edge of the table which I can't really show you but have it resting on the edge of the table so that you can hold and support the hoop a bit more and what I'm doing is I'm actually stitching and following so I'm making sure with my fingers on the front that these fabrics are stitched down. If you stitch alongside first, which is where I probably should have started, then you'll hold the, all the fabrics in place so you can turn it round. And you just do stitches along that same template drawn line so that when you flip this over and you actually start doing your stitching on the front or whatever you're doing on the front, you can see where, where your edges are. So I'm just gonna go all the way down, trying to make sure I'm holding on to everything. To the corner, and then I'll do a stitch there and flip it over and show you. So those are all gonna be held on now. So you can see what I mean about sewing them all on. So that should probably have moved over a bit, but it's not bad. We'll do some stitching on that. When you finish your stitching, I tend to actually stitch my card on. I'll punch holes all down the edges, um, as you can see in here. Punch holes all down the edge of each card and then just stitch that over and over before I cut it out. So I'm going to knot there. So I'm trying to make sure I'm, because I haven't ironed, pulling my fabric so it's lying as flat as possible especially on this side because it was where all the bendy edges are. And there's something very therapeutic about, oh, therapeutic until you get a knot setting up a hoop like this. And once it is set up, you can just come back to it as and when. We would love more people to join in the swap 
uh, I have a spreadsheet so I try and make sure that nobody gets a card from the same person twice so you do end up with a really lovely varied collection of styles of expertise um, different techniques it is truly amazing to see everyone's takes on the themes as well uh, and then I'll I try not to look at them all at the same time until I take a final photo a little group photo at the end to see what everyone's done and they normally all have their own kind of colour colour palette colour thing so if I'm putting trees on I'll put the trees on now so what do you think something like that oh no actually I can't put the trees on now can I because I was going to put that on Maybe that's how we how we roll. So if that were to go at the top there, you could even have a couple of layers of that. I'm gonna try and make it a bit flatter so it doesn't take up loads of space, especially under the felt where it's gonna be. And have that could be kicking off the edge there and off the edge there. So it's just sneaking on the side. Mm, too heavy. Too heavy with two lines. So let's make this a bit more red. That's a bit better, isn't it? <clears throat> Fits more with the uh, colour of the fabric behind. Something like that. And then maybe we could have. Where did this go? This along this edge. Because there's no point stitching things and then putting things on top of that. So you might as well get everything down that you're going to stitch down already. And then stitch on top of it. So I could have that there. But then it could also creep back in. And do something a bit more like that. Oh, that's fun. Not exactly like that, but that could work. So something like that would be fine, but I'd have to get a different thread, I think, and do that. So maybe the next one could have a different tree. You could have that tree on the next one and have it that way. So lots of different types of trees, so every card is slightly different. It's up to you whether you keep all the cards absolutely identical, because if you're making the two cards, the one for you as a reference is how you've interpreted the theme and techniques that you had, so that you could potentially see some kind of growth or you get your own collection what's been really lovely is this swap this year for the 2022 has been along a <clears throat> along a theme um you used to be able to buy i don't know if you can still buy them they were from paper mania uh these lovely atc holder cards so if i i've taken taken them all out now but if i get together so it went January, February, March, April, I've lost my beach hat, May, no, May, June, July I made two, just because I'm an overachieving whatnot. I sent out that one, so July, no, June, July, I'll get it right, no, have I missed one? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, there we go, August and September, so that's my woodland one there, that's the new one, did you see there? So this will be October, November is Starry Night Sky, and December is Festive Greenery. So I should get my thinking cap on for that. That's kind of holly, furs, mistletoe, 
So that might be a bit less landscapey, a bit more focusing in on a flower. But the colours change throughout the season as well. And hopefully 2023 themes will kind of follow the same pattern. Although I've tried to be a little bit more abstract in the theme. So that the return themes that everybody comes up with is a little bit more varied. Because um, the Bluebell one was all quite similar really. Um, so I think the ones I've got back snow capped that's daffodils that one was by the ocean bluebells summer meadow uh, sunset mountains let's have a look what else did I get um, got this lovely one from Sarah winter sun so you can see the colours are kind of very similar with what you get back. Oh, and that's everything. We still haven't sent those, those ones out yet. So it's really exciting. You end up with lots of lovely little bits of artwork and you can frame them um, or you can keep them in a folder like that. Um, I might start putting my extras left over at the end of the year into frames, perhaps I'm popping them in my Etsy shop. So um, do keep an eye out um, for those. Um, but yeah, we'd love to have even if you just try one month and decide it's not for you, uh, we'd love to have as many people join in as possible. Um, and you can join in worldwide. We might have to rethink how postage works, but we have had uh, a member from the US join this year uh, and she sends multiple ones at a time. Um, and then I save up her swaps and send her back her multiple ones. Um, we work out postage and I send her a PayPal invoice she pays it, I pay for the postage and send it back to her. And that has worked really well. So I'm happy to do that for others. If you're not in the UK, um, if you are in the UK and you would like to save a little bit of postage costs, um, you're welcome to do the same thing. Send me multiple cards at once and then whatever self-addressed envelopes you send back, we can arrange to save up your returns. Um, and I've got a folder going where only Stitchgate things live. So. Hopefully it's given you a little bit more of an idea of what the stitch capes are um, and perhaps you'll be encouraged to join us again in 2023. Um, although there are also still two more, three more, three more swaps for this year. So if you want to just do a test run this year and join in, um, you're most welcome to do so. So uh, if you've got any questions, drop me a message. See you soon.